So today's video is all about different electronic drum sets and multipads that you can't buy yet. These are coming in the next like 12 to six months in the world of electronic drums. And I'm just giving you guys a heads up about them and what I think about them overall. We're gonna be covering HXM, DB Drums, Gava, and Carlsboro. Let's start off by talking about HXM. This is one of those companies that I've known about for quite a while. I've seen photos of the drums and all that stuff, but I've never been able to play any of their stuff until recently. So this is the HXM XD1080. It has a key feature that makes it different from every other electronic drum set I've ever played in my life. It has a drum amp built into the kick drum. But first, let's start with the overall specs of the drum set. You get 13 inch hi-hats, 14 inch crash cymbals, and a 14 inch ride cymbal. And by the way, that is a one cable connection going to that ride cymbal. So it's more similar to like a Yamaha cymbal versus a roll and symbol. The sizes of the drums are 14 inches for the snare, two 10 inch high toms, a 14 inch floor tom, and a 20 inch kick drum. They also say that it comes in multiple different color options, but the one you're seeing right here is obviously the black version. Moving over to the drum module, it comes preloaded with 820 sounds and a polyphony of 189. They have something they're calling auto variation samples, which I assume is another term for round robin samples. It comes with a bunch of different effects inside of the module, four band EQ, compression, delay, chorus, flanger, and all those are adjustable. And of course, like most drum modules, you can tune the drums and cymbals up and down, and there's also panning adjustments. It comes with Bluetooth MIDI in and out and Bluetooth audio, individual inputs, no cable snake to be seen here, and finally, faders for all the different drums and cymbals. The drum module has a one gigabyte memory with samples from a company called V3. Now let's talk about what's actually interesting about the kit. And that's the fact that it has a drum amp inside of the kick drum. This makes the drum set more fun to play, believe it or not. It breathes life into this electronic drum set because it physically shakes while you're playing on it. When you hit the kick drum, a vibration will happen and go through the pedal and then up through your leg. It makes it feel more acoustic-like. It's very, very fun to play on this thing. In a way, it kind of reminds me of using a throne thumper or a butt kicker, just getting a physical response from an electronic drum set. So one thing that you're probably interested in is how accurate is this kick drum? When you have a piezo, which senses vibration, and that's how the whole thing works, and you'll also have that sitting right next to a subwoofer, which is probably shaking this kick drum all over the place, isn't that gonna mess with the overall trigger accuracy? The answer is yes and no. When I was talking to the people at the company, they said that they actually isolated the speaker drivers from the piezo itself because they knew that it would be an issue. You're essentially creating crosstalk. But there's also another problem. I think they were being very aggressive with the trigger settings because when I played really fast doubles, it didn't always pick up both of my hits, as you can see in this footage right here. So basically the kick drum is still kind of a question mark in my mind. I'm not ready to write it off because maybe I could have saved it with some trigger setting adjustments, but the, the fear that I have is that if I did dial back some of those aggressive settings, I'm wondering if they would then pick up some of the speaker vibrations by accident. So it's kind of a question mark in my mind. Overall, it worked fine for regular tempo hits, but when I played really fast doubles, that's when it kind of fell apart. They're kind of swinging for the fences with this idea, and I like that. I like when companies try out brand new things. I like it when there's a lot of experimentation happening. We'll just have to see how it pans out. If I ever get my hands on this for like an actual review, then I'll be able to really thoroughly test this out and see if I can have like the speaker up really loud and also get good triggering results. It's hard to give like a thumbs up or thumbs down to this kit because I don't know what the actual pricing will be when it officially comes out. My hope is that it will eventually sell for like $2,000 because that will make it a competitive product. But if they do go with like four or $5,000 pricing like I heard them throwing around the idea of, then that will make it uh, kind, of, kind of a hard sell. That means it's going up against the Pearl Emerge, against ATV, and against the Roland VAD line. Those are much more polished kits 
This drum set does need some work on like the cymbal sizes, the ride cymbal needs to be larger, the sounds need to be a little bit better, it needs to be polished a little bit before it can be selling for around the four or $5,000 range. But of course, all this is just hearsay because they're not in the United States yet, and this is just a sneak peek on what could happen if they do come to the United States. So that is HXM. They do have a bunch of other different electronic drum sets, but unfortunately I didn't get a chance to really test all those individually but hopefully this will give you an idea of what their drums are like. Okay, so that was company number one. Now let's move ahead to the second company I wanna cover in today's video, and that's DB Drums. DB Drums is a small electronic drum company based in Argentina, and they're working on a prototype of a brand new sample pad. It's currently on Kickstarter, so if it gets funded, this thing will go out and be in stores. I got a chance to play the prototype, so here are some quick playing examples, and then I'll talk about the different specs and what's on offer here. So the basic feeling that I'm getting from using this product is that they're going for making a Roland SPD-SX but for a much lower price. I think that's their overall strategy with this sample pad. So here are the specs and what you're getting here. There are 9 rubber zones, 620 built-in sounds, and of course you can import your own WAV files because this is a sample pad. There are two pad inputs, but if you use cable splitters you can get up to four different pads plugged into this thing. There are two foot switch inputs. There's an eighth inch aux input for plugging into your cell phone or into a laptop. There are two quarter inch outputs right and left. There's a headphone jack. There's USB MIDI. There are five pin MIDI in and out ports. There's a USB input for like a thumb drive so you can load in your own samples. And like all good sample pads, it has looping abilities and layering abilities. So the overall vibe that I was getting from this product is they're going for making a Roland SPD-SX, but at a lower price. And I feel like we could use more sample pads that aren't like $900. We need more options out there in around like the five to $400 price range. We'll have to see if it actually gets funded on Kickstarter and if it actually comes to market. But overall, I had a good time playing it. I also spent a lot of time desperately trying to beat my high score on the speed test pad they had to the right of that multi-pad. I think you got to play for like 30 or 60 seconds and it tallied up how many hits you did in that time frame. And I just kept trying over and over again, but I kind of hit my limit around 460. Okay, so the next company that I wanna talk about is Geva. Geva is working on a brand new line of electronic drums. So the three drum sets are the Studio 5, the Pro C5, and the Pro C6. Last year, I made a very detailed video breaking down all the different specs and potential pricing and all that fun stuff. So if you want a really detailed overview of these three drum sets, go watch that video. This is gonna be more of like an update to that video. What kind of state is this drum set line in now? So of course that video is a tad old now because they made it after the 2019 NAMM convention when I got a chance to play it. That also means though, they've been making steady improvements to this drum set for a year straight. But because all the hardware seems to be locked down, I don't really think they've been really working on making better symbols or better sensors or anything like that. I believe they've just been working for a year straight coding new updates to the drum module. I don't think that people quite realize how time consuming and how expensive it is to develop a flagship drum module. They put a lot of effort into making the drum module as good as they could. Unfortunately, I don't think it's quite there yet. I don't think this drum set is ready for prime time, at least in the state that I played it in. Before I talk about that stuff though, let's go over a brief list of the different specs of the overall drum set and the drum module. Remember, there are three versions of this drum set, but this year I got a chance to test the C6 version, so let's go over those specs. It's gonna be selling for about $5,000. This one features a carbon fiber wrap finish. It's got two ply Remo drum heads. It's got the G9 drum module with a 10 inch touchscreen on it. It's got a multi-chip architecture, 128 gigabytes of internal memory and a four gig flash storage memory section. It's got 40 drum sets inside. It's got 400 sounds. This appears to be the first drum module to have Wi-Fi on board. It also has Bluetooth, 12 different reverb effects, nine different multi effects. It's got a sound store, so I'm guessing they want you to buy more sounds. It's got eight direct outputs on the back. It's got two quarter inch outs and also two XLR outs, which is awesome. It has individual inputs, individual outputs, MIDI in and out, and it has a headphone jack, obviously, 
And thankfully, the whole thing includes a hi-hat stand, which a lot of companies just don't include in the box. Here are the drum sizes. You get an 18-inch kick drum, a 10-inch tom, two 12-inch toms, a 14-inch floor tom, a 14-inch snare, two 14-inch crash cymbals, an 18-inch ride cymbal, and a 14-inch set of hi-hats. The drum rack is made by DW. I like the overall look of the drum set. It feels high quality and it looks high quality. The only thing that I would change is I would smooth the underside of the cymbals because it looks like I'm seeing a part of the cymbal that should be hidden by a cover of some kind. But overall, I think the drum set looks sharp. I like that carbon fiber finish. They're kind of swinging for the fences with this pricing. I feel like it's a little bit high, but it is expensive to develop a drum set for this amount of time. So they might have to sell it for that pricing because of how much time and effort they've put into making this drum set. Still, it should probably be a thousand bucks less on all the different tiers that they're offering, in my opinion. In the prototype phase that I played it in, again this year, the triggering is still not dialed in. Now, whenever they do the videos and everything, it looks like it's working perfectly, and they've made custom trigger patches for the different artists that they've hired to show off the drum set. But when I sat down and played it, I was not getting the trigger response of like a TD-50, or an ATV drum set, or a Yamaha drum set. It just doesn't have that plug and play sort of thing going for it. I'd really have to spend more time in the settings to dial it in for my playing. And really every electronic drum set of this caliber should be a just sit down, turn on the module, and perfectly playing out of the box experience. With the amount of money and effort that they've been putting into this drum set line, I definitely think the triggering will get there eventually. It's just not there as of right now. But of course, this is still a prototype phase, so I'm not gonna to be too hard on the drum set yet. We'll have to see what it's like when it's out officially in its store ready form. Okay, so let's move ahead to company number four, Carlsboro. This is a company that I don't cover enough on this channel. They make a lot of decent electronic drum sets at fairly low prices. But this time we're not talking about a drum set of theirs. We're gonna be talking about a brand new multipad that they're working on. So this is the Carlsboro Octo Percussion Pad Model A. It's essentially a Roland Octopad, but at a much cheaper price. They don't have an official website page for this thing yet, so all the specs that I'm gonna list just came from the booth that I saw it at. So I'm just gonna give you a rough idea of what this pad will be like. I can't really tell you what the pricing will be yet. It comes with eight rubber zones, 300 built-in sounds. There are multiple different effects to choose between. There's a recording feature. They're also leaning heavy into the learning functions. There's a wireless connection to teaching software you can download onto your computer. I really like the fact that there are dedicated buttons for switching between the chord sounds, the percussion sounds, the bass sounds, and the drum sounds. There's a stick holder for one drum stick for some reason. I wish there were stick holders for two, but they only have a room for one. And there's a kick drum pedal input and a hi-hat pedal input. The best thing about this multipad is the fact that it actually includes both of those in the box. It comes with a kick drum pedal and a hi-hat pedal. Now, of course, they're not like, you know, $100 versions. They're not really, really nice. They're made of plastic but I like the fact that they at least give you some low cost versions included in the box. I don't think any other multipad like this even offers that. So I wish I could tell you more about it, but that's all the specs that I could gather from using it in person and also the sign in front of their booth. So yeah, it seems to be a pretty good pad overall, as long as they sell it for a decently low price. I feel like it's a nice option for people that don't wanna spend like 700 bucks on a really expensive Roland Octopad. Okay, so that is about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Hope you guys enjoyed this sort of style of video where I cover future electronic drum sets. Let me know if you want me to make more videos like this in the future. Have an amazing day and I'll see you all in a few.